Hey everyone, Miranda Patron back here with you again to do a fun candle holder. This little guy is from one of the Happy Dotting Company molds, which are amazing, and I cast it with Potter's Plaster. I'll post all the links for that type of thing in the description. So I use a variety of tools on this one, so which you can do as well. Any tools will work, and I'm using Deco Art paints. So this is a little palette that I picked. I am loving the winter palettes. You can check mine out on Pinterest on my color palettes yay tab. And I'll post that in the links as well. So this little guy I just started out with with some guidelines using actually the happy dotting stencil for her three inch stone. I actually just placed it over my candle holder and I used my etcher to just draw in the guidelines that I wanted to do. Um, so just make sure it's centered and it's overlapping the edge. And then when you just have your paint, your black painted background, I just kind of etched them in where I wanted the lines so that I would have them spaced out accordingly. And you don't have to measure, just follow that. And then afterwards, I just kind of followed where I put the lines and sketched just a little petal on each of them and if you want your petal to be the same for all you make yourself a little stencil just draw one cut it out on a piece of paper and then you'll have it all the way around so on mine I had the three and three so I just did the six but just a little trick for next time for yourself too okay so we're going to do some of these cute little mukas somebody called these from Zentangle where the etcher is I'm using Fruit Punch Multi-Surface and I'm just starting at the base of our petal and then almost like the top of a number two, draw it up and around and then let the tail drag out with the paint. So I had some technical difficulties a little bit here with a section of the video. So I did do both sides of the petal with the Fruit Punch mukas. <laughs> Okay, so just to kind of fill in and explain where the technical difficulties disappeared, um, I did both sides here of each petal with Fruit Punch multi-surface, and I just used my etcher tool, and then I came in around here and used some of the gray gray and I did a larger dot in between each of these and then I used my etcher tool and dipped it in white to go ahead and do just a white line here around each of these busy life here I apologize <laughs> so and then this here is this gorgeous peri periwinkle and I use that to just do a swipe here above each of the white. So that's kind of omitted from part of the video as well here. So big dot of gray and a little dot of gray, the two swipes and the other side of our petal. So that should just about catch you up to where we need to be. So I waited for the top to dry and flipped my candle holder completely upside down. And I've got some large acrylic rods where I just used the biggest one I had and put some gray storm dots around the base. I find it easier to paint it flipped over just the angles that they're on. And then I'm just going to fill in here a little bit with my brush with the gray as well because we're just going to polka dot the whole bottom. Just haphazardly, randomly polka dot. And this is a nice light gray. It's actually called cobblestone. And again, I really appreciate you guys bearing with me with the studio. The lighting in this area keeps changing and the colors aren't 100%, but <clears throat> as always, I list them in the description so you'll know which ones I use. So this is the cobblestone. 
And I'm not planning at all where these go, just haphazardly kind of tucking them in to fill in the negative space along here. Okay, now while those polka dots are drying, I'm going to switch back to the periwinkle and my etcher and start doing some swipes from the peak of each of our petals here down to the center. I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit off and then drag it out and it will get smaller here. Next I have baby blue and we are going to go on either side of that periwinkle with some more swipes down and that way we're just going to kind of get a nice little collection of bluish purple swipes inside of our petal here. Okay, now we're going to go back in here with hydrangea, and hydrangea is just absolutely gorgeous. This is such a beautiful color. It's one of the American Americana multi-surface satin paints, but I think it fits in well with this little combination here. So just working our way around each side and just tucking them in here. And then I just put a little bit of white and mixed it in with my um, periwinkle and that's how I got this last color here. So it's just a little bit of white mixed in with the periwinkle for this last little swipe. And that will fill our petal. So I misspoke earlier. Now is when I actually found it on the video to put the periwinkle swipes above the white. <laughs> so I'm just doing the thicker end at the opposite end of the white. So down by the tail. And just put a dot and pull it across just like you're drawing a line with a pencil. And a couple more over here. Just the opposite of which the white are, the thicker side together. So I just flipped it over like this and that was how I did the gray area with the gray storm and the large acrylic rot. So 
I just have to make sure the consistency of your paint is pretty thin. So you can see with the technical difficulties of this video, it kind of jumbled everything together. So it's just a little bit of review of how I did the bottom side angled part. So you can actually see it's just a large acrylic rod. And the deco art paints are almost perfect consistency right out of the bottle, most of them. So I'm just dipping and pressing it directly against the stone or the candle holder in this case. And there's no really rhyme or reason. I'm just trying to fill in the space on the bottom with a bunch of dots. <laughs> and because it's thin enough, it doesn't pull out that peak. So this is about like a quarter inch rod about, and I'm using pewter and I'm just filling in. This is one of the extreme sheens. Sometimes these have like a string that will pull up, so you have to just be careful. But this one today is thin enough. Probably the temperature in my studio is decent enough that it's pretty fluid. So I'm just going through and filling in randomly some of the spaces with the pewter. These extreme sheens are so much fun. <laughs> nice and shiny when they dry too so let's steal a couple and put some little dots of that in there too I really like this pewter color I think it's gonna be great I just have a brush I'm just dipping dotting haphazardly just to fill in the space Okay, so now I'm just kind of going at the top of where our mukas meet, and I'm drawing a petal on the side underneath here. And I'm going to use the largest dotting tool here. And I'm using that periwinkle, and I'm doing a larger 3 millimeter dot just in the center of these petals. If you want your petals to be all exactly the same size, again, you could just make yourself a stencil out of a piece of paper and move it around to the spots you'd like. I just kind of freehand it. This is baby blue, and I'm just tucking two dots of baby blue on either side of the periwinkle. And one of the things that you know this is on a slant so the consistency of the paint too if it's too thin it will run down your piece so it makes it a little a little challenge to do this but not impossible so this is the etcher tool so I'm going a little bit smaller just with a couple dots of white at the top and bottom and then I'm going to use the etcher tool with some of the fruit punch to delineate our petals here. I'm going to do the largest dot in the center of the petal and then work my way to each edge just so that the dots get smaller as the paint runs off the tool and that way you have smaller dots it looks a little daintier when you come to the point. You can do them all the same size, you can change it up any way you want, That's just make it your own. But that's the only reason I'm doing that. Plus, I don't have a ton of room in my design to go any larger at the tips of either one of the petals. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So there are only six of these petals on the sides, just like there's only six of the petal elements at the top.
Okay, so now I'm using the hydrangea. And I'm just going to do one row of hydrangea around the top here. And then we'll do two of periwinkle and two of the gray storm. You can just disregard the diagonal lines. I was just testing out theories on parts that I wanted to do for design, but I, when I etch them on, I just leave them because once I varnish it, the dampness of the varnish is, just erases all the lines anyway, so I don't really worry about that. So just disregard the diagonal lines. I'm not going to use them. Sometimes I, I make a plan, and some, most times I don't, but and you just got to test out what you think will look good. What, what appeals to you that day? So these are the periwinkles. So you can see this is a little more fluid today when I started this one. And it's just I blooped it on there and it's running down so I'm just gonna scoop that one off and because we have the black background I'll just paint black over it so that it, it fixes that area but this is one of the benefits too of having a background is you just kind of spread some black over the area and then you can come back to it at another point in time and just kind of touch up temperature in an area really makes a big difference with the paints I've noticed lately. Maybe just because it's getting winter and we've turned on our heat here. <laughs> and my studio area now is by three huge windows, so we'll have to see how this plays out. Just getting used to any area. Sometimes in the the old studio it got really warm and then I moved it to the basement and the lighting changes so you just kind of got to play around with your area that you work in. So you can see I used the brush for all these dots but you can use the dotting tool, you can use whatever you have. So this is about the same size dot as the larger dotting tool. And that's too what you can use for the bottom. It doesn't always have to be brushes. I've seen people use Q-tips, pencil erasers, whatever you want. Alright, so I'm debating what I want to put in here for design. So I'm just kind of playing, I was talking earlier about etching lines on, so I'm going to use this liquid chrome and we're just going to do some little scroll work here. And then after I finish up the scroll work, I'll put one dot of the silver in the middle of the large periwinkles in our petal. Okay, so I am using this awesome liquid chrome to just draw some scroll work in here but you can put any design you want in your spaces these things are amazing whatever you can draw you can use this paint marker to make and it's so shiny look it's almost like a mirror so we'll put our little dots here in between some periwinkle and then I'll also do some on the gray in the top but also on the bottom just to do some fill work so here on the gray cobblestone in the top We'll put a center dot on each of those, but see how easy it is to use. And then just fill work here on the bottom. It's actually really easy. All you do is depress the tip a little bit to get more paint out. And then you're just filling in here with the liquid chrome. It's really, I want bigger circles, I just draw them. I'm just Popping them on here really quick. So this is the edger tool here, and I'm just going to do underneath the chrome here. 
with some white swipes just to kind of fill in that last space. So let me see if I can show you here from the side. It's just literally a dip dot and then drag it out. And I'm going a little quick here, but if you take your time, your swipes will be neater. <laughs> and if I put my wrist on a base, like put it on the desk, just kind of like when you're writing with a pencil, just draw a straight line and then you'll have your swipe. And there is our candle holder. And I say candle holder, but there's so many uses for this. I've used succulents in it. I put the LED lights in them. I even have a live succulent in some of them, although the watering is, you know. So like this one, you can just put a fake one in there and then you have it. I probably would go with a green or something. These are the LED candles. So if you're worried about flame and then you could actually put a, just a tea light in here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I enjoyed making it. Thank you for bearing with me <laughs> throughout the technical difficulties. But also, you know, the studio is still under construction. So doing this out of my living room is a challenge. And I so appreciate you guys bearing with me. <laughs> so you probably can hear kids in the background and stuff like that. So thank you for bearing with me. Hopefully we will be up and running in a couple of months in the actual studio. And we'll see what happens. All right, as always, you guys can find me on Facebook and Instagram if you are off YouTube. So come and say hi, send me a picture, whatever. Just stop in and say hi. All right, have a great day.